thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson of the forum, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to start by thanking uh, former Nigerian President uh, Obasanjo for inviting our President uh, Salba Kirmayadid uh, to attend this uh, very important forum. Uh, I am honored to be here representing him in our country, the Republic of South Sudan, which is actually the newest uh, country uh, in the globe. South Sudan has an area of uh, 648,000 square kilometers, 95% of which is quite arable. Uh, the country is endowed with many forms of natural resources, including minerals, minerals such as diamond, gold, uranium, magnesium, copper, and mention there may be up to 15. Uh, leave alone the fact that we have oil, and maybe uh, two-thirds of southern Sudan is actually plotting on oil. Our misfortune is that all this is, is still untapped. So tapas will be welcome. Uh, allow me to start by highlighting uh, the rapidly changing business landscape of my bigger home and this is Africa. Complete resolution efforts are underway in some parts of Congo, uh, DRC, the Sudan, Northern Nigeria, Mali, Central Africa Republic, and so on. A comparative overall assessment of the continent indicates that the 21st century is going to be that of Africa's takeoff into economic growth, prosperity, and development. Since the decision of the AU not to admit leaders who are sent to power by means of coup d'etat, transition of power has, in most parts of Africa, been through elections democratically. This has undoubtedly led to a conspicuous internal market instability, which in turn contributed to an emergence of the conducive investment climate we see today in the continent. Your Excellencies, Complete resolution, political stability, and economic progress closely relate to youth employment. Youth employment in the continent, uh, the, the youth in the continent constitute 99% of the rebel groups fighting forces, and this is the case in other parts of the world. Most of those fighters are actually from this idol group, the youth. The link between political and socioeconomic development, to which most, if not all, developed economies of the world today are firmly premised, must receive more attention from heads of states and governments like our good selves here, and should be preached to the masses so as to forge a way for a positive engagement of the youth. Academics, as well as policy researchers, should be encouraged to devote a reasonable time to research and publish key messages 
on this determinant economic growth. The experience of East Africa, uh, East African countries with the policy of uh, uh, M-Pesa, that is mobile transfer of money, has revolutionized small and middle scale businesses in the region. The same is now in West Africa. This demonstrates a marriage between Western blueprints and best practices with the African way of life, hence producing new patterns of growth, enabling hundreds of thousands of youth to become entrepreneurs. Africa receives less than 3% of the total investment flows of the world because private capital gravitates towards countries and regions with the highest financial returns, naturally, and the greatest perceived safety. People are after security. Why are debt problems are severe? Governments are unstable. And economic reforms are only beginning. The risk of capital loss can be high. The purpose of any investment must be to alleviate poverty, inequality, and unemployment. The multinational uh, companies employ a relatively small or rapidly growing number of people in the least developed countries. Despite their insignificance in terms of the overall national employment, corporations often exert influence on urban salary scales and migrant worker perceptions. The middle income countries have been the favored destinations of these investment flows with Sub-Saharan African and South Asia neglected. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to say something on foreign direct investment with respect to my own country, South Sudan. I think this is where I want to focus and draw attention most being still a new country and almost virgin in all respects. We pursue in Southern Sudan a policy of regional cooperation in order to maximize access to transport, infrastructure, and institutional capabilities of the neighboring countries. In the region, South Sudan has made steps in seeking membership to some important organizations, such as the AU, we are members already there. Then we have COMESA, we have the East African Community, then we have the IGAD, Intergovernmental Authority on Development. And you have bodies such as the Indian Ocean Commission, IOC. All the intention here is to expand market and cement also political relations as a result of improvement in the economy. Our laws and regulations in South Sudan favor, uh, are actually favorable to improving investment climate and in order to speed up economic growth. These laws and policies stipulate that all sectors are open to domestic and foreign investors. Since the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2005 that brought the war to an end in the Sudan, we passed a number of investment-related laws, among them and these are of interest 
to all investors are Investment Promotion Act. This already there, Partnership Act is on the ground, Land Act is on the ground, Taxation Act is on the ground, Companies Act is on the ground, Agency Act, Contract Act, Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, Limited Partnership Act, Arbitration Act, Cooperatives Act, the Sale of Goods Act, and so on and so on. You can mention them. We have many laws favoring investment. These laws brighten the investment climate in South Sudan, leading to some improvements in the areas of registration of businesses. Increase in the number of machinery and vehicles for investment. Increase in the number of airlines flying to Juba International Airport. Increase in the number of tourists now to Southern Sudan. Hotels have increased, including restaurants of different types. So you can eat any food that you get here in uh, New York. You can also eat this in many parts of Southern Sudan. Uh, as our government focuses on making South Sudan a prepared attractive destination for investors worldwide, it is also obliged to promote a strong globally competitive private sector. So we want to encourage private sector. It is through establishment of international uh, or even multinational large-scale investments, especially in the industrial sector, and encouragement of our locals to get involved in entrepreneurship, that we can liberate the people of South Sudan from poverty, inequality, and unemployment. This approach, however, requires the support of the international community the multinational corporations and investors all over the world to support the new nation, South Sudan, particularly in agriculture, physical infrastructure, financial institutions, and all areas of services, health, education, and so on. On our part, as a government and people of South Sudan, we are sure all prospective investors of a peaceful and secure environment rule of law, microeconomic stability, a clear and well-coordinated regulatory framework, and basic infrastructure. Investors operating in the priority sectors identified above will benefit from a package of incentives, and these incentives will include access to land, licensing, entry permits, and tax holidays. Uh, we see in the legal and the current framework. In conclusion, as a point of emphasis, creating opportunities for youth employment should become a central element of investment, of investment policies in Africa, including South Sudan. Getting the youth employed lures them away from criminal engagements and abuses. Any visionary investment policy should encourage the private sector to be at its forefront. This is why South Sudan is doing its best to attract private sector investment. Therefore, you are welcome to visit South Sudan, which is suitable not only for lucrative investment, but for tourism, uh, for tourism with the presence of huge wildlife, beautiful scenery, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, come now to Southern Sudan and invest. Thank you very much. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.